time to get going here. I figured, uh, given Chris's uh, experience earlier, uh, we'd see if we could see uh, the laptop and handle out of the orbs presentation. Uh, <laughs> but no, we're going to have one on his own laptop. So um, I think without further ado, we're going to turn things over to the orb to give us a presentation here on the uh, 10 meter. Uh, Resolution for a quarter trillion grid point kinetic supercell simulation. So turn it over to Lee. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks all for coming. Um, I'm going to be talking about some high resolution su supercell simulation work I've been doing, sort of amping it up to 10 here. Um, I don't have to tell to you guys too much about the motivation for this work. We know that supercells produce the, more, the most uh, severe tornadoes, most tornadoes. Um, I'm mostly interested in the ones that produce EF4, EF5 type damage, the long track tornadoes. And we have a lot of work to do uh, to understand these. I will say that I'm very excited about the work I'm seeing with Taurus and some of the recent numerical work as well um, to sort of help our understanding of what goes on inside of these things. Um, I'm using George Bryan, George Bryan's CM1 model, running on, um, I, I wrote my own I.O. driver to, to save data frequently. Um, we're using the environmental conditions of 24 May 2011. And for the visualization tools you'll see here, Vapor, Visit, and NC View primarily. And the computer that this simulation ran on was the Blue Water supercomputer. Uh, recently, I've transitioned over to the Frontera supercomputer at TAC. Um, so basically, some of the earlier work, uh, this is from our 30 meter simulation looking at the vorticity field shaded by the vertical component of vorticity. And the story here is primarily uh, before tornado genesis, you see these erect uh, vortices, uh, some blue guys and some red guys referring to cyclonic and anticyclonic. They're basically a parade of vortices, as I call them, moving from the forward flank to the rear flank. And this parade kind of keeps going for a while. And it isn't until the leading member of this parade sort of stops and things just kind of pile up in one spot that you start to see the tornado form. A tornado seems to form as an accumulation of vorticity. And subsequently, or, or, or concurrently, we have this thing we call the streamwise vorticity current going on in the forward flank. And uh, you also see vortices moving along that boundary as well. So to try to sort of strip away some of the complexity here, I've done some work. This is also shown at the Severe Local Storms Conference, where we look at temporally averaged fields. And the story here is you get this pressure drop that happens very quickly. It's, it's associated with the SVC, and it's also associated with the strengthening of the low-level updraft. The updraft near the ground gets very strong, and the tornado sort of falls out of that. Now, this is temporally average, so keep that in mind. So this is our prior work, and the story we're, trying, we're sort of converging here on is, is the ingestion of the streamwise vorticity via features such as the streamwise vorticity current results in a drop in the pressure, and the drop in the pressure results in a strengthening of the updraft, and the strengthening of the updraft near the ground enhances stretching, convergence, and all those things. And then because there's an abundance of, of vertical vorticity and, and horizontal vorticity, in, in that region, we get uh, a tornado to form. The fi now, as we go to higher resolution, this is also prior work, 15 meter simulation, the same sort of uh, parade of vortices turning into a tornado. We do see um, the, the tornado seems to form further back into the, into the, in the cold pool in these higher resolution simulations, and that may be significant. The SVC, you can see here, is much more turbulent. Okay, so when I, I get a little nervous when I, when I look at my 30 meter data and I get the impression the SVC might be this nice laminar thing, well, it may be more turbulent in reality. So this is, the, this is the new talk, this is the new stuff. I've written a short paper on this about the methods I did and a brief description of the simulation. Um, this is a 11,000 by 11,000 by 2,000 grid points. It's a lot of grid points, by the way. Um, I went through so many hardware failures during the simulation. About half of my computer time was just going back to restart files because computers just fail. Um, we're going to focus in on this region in the center. Um, you can sort of see it almost looks like a supercell is eating another supercell here, but this is sort of the, associated with this SVC. You can see two regions of vorticity at this point, one here at the south, one here at the north. And I'll, let you, I'll show you which one uh, turns into the tornado and what happens. Um, so in this simulation, in the 10 meter simulation, we see these are vorticity tracks, and this is what we uh, refer to back in Weiss, v, Weiss, Weiss referred to as a left flank convergence boundary. And you can see over time what happens is you get these, vort these, these uh, vorticity uh, ro rolling up along this boundary, and, so, and the, the boundary sort of surges outward. Uh, looking at this at the surface, uh, we have a couple of vort vortices here, vortex A, and you'll see vortex B merges with vortex A. This vortex eventually does merge as well. Um, now I'm going to step through some, ice, some uh, volume rendering. Here's the, the uh, uh, this is vorticity magnitude. You start to see vorticity right around the 1.5 inverse second, so we're looking at strong vorticity. And here's what you'd see with the cloud and what's going on in the ground. So I'll step through this quickly and animate it in a moment. Uh, you can see these uh, vortices firing up near the surface. Here's vortex A, and you can see a condensation funnel associated with that. 
Uh, the second vortex here is going to sort of merge into the first one, and there's a, there's a third one, vortex C, and that's as far as I stop counting at that point. Um, it does a very interesting thing where just as the tornado is starting to really ramp up, it coils into vortex A, and it's really something I've never seen before and I'm pretty excited about. So as you get to these higher resolution simulations, you start to fully resolve turbulence basically, and you start to pick up things that are, that are quite interesting. But notice these are the tracks of all these vortices, uh, the paths of these vortices in the vorticity field. So you can see it's sort of like a merging, there's a lot of merging going on with, with vortices. Uh, there's vortex C coiling into vortex A. And that is just, to me, amazing. I don't think anything like that's ever been observed or, or seen in models before, so I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know what it means, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that's a lot of my work, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it looks pretty cool. So here at this point, we have a fully formed EF5 tornado. So let's look at this. Uh, this is every two-tenths of a second. This sort of uh, diffuse, what you're seeing here, this is basically what we just call the SVC, although I'm not gonna really call it that, but it's the SVC-like flow. This is the left flank convergence boundary. There's a vortex that's sort of in the rear flank that's starting to fire up. But look at what happens. Uh, you'll start to see a vortex uh, sort of just grow out of the ground, and it really doesn't do that. And again, there's lies, damn lies, and vorticity contours, or, or, or isosurfaces. But I try to show a lot of different values here. So this one right here, nope, it's this one right here. And this is the way, it almost tries to keep going with the parade, but it, it sort of anchors to the ground, and then you see that vortex. Uh, here's vortex B as in the, other, in the previous figure that sort of gets uh, assimilated into vortex A. And here's that other vortex C, and I'll show this twice because it's so neat but then it just kind of coils around this vortex. And that is like, it's, it's assembling a tornado from, from parts almost is what it looks like. Uh, and here's this you know, SVC type flow over here on the, on the forward flank. Um, but you know, at that I just, you know, I look at this and I go, boy, I sure hope this isn't too important because having to, uh, to understand this sort of thing is, is kind of crazy. Um, but when you get start looking at the details, it really does look pretty impressive what's going on here. So the, and then it very rapidly becomes a two-celled structure and, and eventually turns into a multiple vortex tornado. So here's the it's coming right for us view. So you're looking in the rear view mirror and this is what you're seeing, that's bad. Um, it's, it's catching up, but you can see the path again in the vorticity field. Uh, I like to show the cloud field in this simulation because I think it looks fairly reasonable. I mean, and that looks like a pretty decent wedge tornado to me. Uh, here's a view from looking towards, uh, I guess, the west here. Uh, I've clipped the cloud a little bit, but I'm almost glad I did. You can see the amazing rising motion here. This giant, you know, beautiful wall cloud. This, there's a lot of uh, multiple vortices in here. And it looks a lot like another storm that I saw uh, up in the Midwest. This is the, uh, the Fairdale tornado. And I look at this and I look at that and I go, yeah, we're on the right track, I think. Uh, you can see the uh, cycloidal pass. This is in the pressure deficit field. Okay, so this, this animation is showing uh, basically vorticity at the surface, vertical vorticity at the surface. And basically it's a vortex party and everyone's invited. I mean, everybody's coming in, here's the LFCB, but you see vortices streaming in from all, all different portions. You can see the ones that are starting to try to form tornadoes, I guess if you sort of anthropomorphize these storms, which we all do. Um, and then here's the convergence and then you start to see the tornado. Here's the vortex A, vortex B. Uh, and the vortex C that comes around and wraps in, and, and then it's just, uh, you know, off to the races. You'll start to see relatively soon uh, the multiple vortices, the cycloidal circulations going on in the pressure, in the, um, excuse me, vorticity field. So this is referring back to the, uh, the, the theta rho prime field, so this is the cold pool um, evolving. So this is prior to tornado genesis, so this is the LFCB. Um, here, you know, ahead, of, this is the more diffuse uh, region. Uh, of, of the forward flank, uh, and here's the rear flank region, and then I don't know what flank this is, it's just cold air, I guess. You know, we, we do need to sort of up, update our conceptual models. You start to see, you have incredible convergence going on, you start to see some wrap-ups along this boundary, and this is the one that becomes a tornado. Uh, yes, you see positive, uh, you see warm air in the center, uh, you have a downdraft in the center there, but I want, I want to pause here for a second because there's been discussions about boundaries and whether boundaries are in the vicinity of tornadoes. And when I look at this image, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Over here you have sort of the environmental air to the southeast, the more diffuse air from the forward flank, a very sharp cutoff here as long as the LSCB. And over here in the rear flank, you actually have slightly positively buoyant air. You see these surges in the rear flank in this simulation at all resolutions, sometimes producing air that's positively buoyant. 
So this is, again, I'll be showing a bunch of these uh, vorticity magnitude shaded by the vertical component. You can sort of, there's the LSCB boundary. You can see uh, essentially the same story you saw at the low resolution simulations. There is the vortex that just sort of, ah, I'm gonna get pulled back here. The parade stops, the tornado forms. And vorticity just accumulates in this region. You see a lot of vortex mergers. Uh, this guy does eventually end up uh, merging here, but there's your, the, the warm air that, you know, from a surge in the rear flank long after the tornado is well established. But you can see these different almost air masses here uh, all over the place. Now, it's a numerical model, I know, and our surface boundary condition is wrong, but so is everyone else's. And, you know, there's a lot of caveats here, but I mean, I got to say, it's, it's, it's a pretty decent, decent representation. Looking uh, sort of, this is where you would associate with the SVC here behind the LFCB. You can see the, uh, the, the vorticity, compare this to the recent, the earlier 15 meter simulation. Again, you can choose whatever contour you want to show whatever you want in a sense, but you can see that there's plenty of vorticity here. I wouldn't say that it's all streamwise, it's kind of, it's, it's turbulent, uh, but you'll see the tornado wrap up right about here. So what I'm gonna show for the next, most of the rest of a talk, and I, I kind of apologize for this, but these are really fast, okay? I'm gonna put a, I have a copy of this on, on, online that's slowed down that you guys can download after the talk, but here's, I wanna go further into the simulation looking into the later phase of the tornado, just because the tornado structure gets really, really neat. So these, these uh, vortices and these mergers are, are, are common throughout the simulation, but once the tornado gets well established, you don't really see them as much. Uh, and, and that's an interesting observation as well. You get a surge in the rear flank, you sort of see vortices flaring up here. These don't turn into tornadoes, they might look like gust nados. there's just not enough upper air support and as, the, as the, the transient updraft sort of slows down. The tornado is, at this point, is sort of enshrouded in rain, but you see some very interesting dynamics in the tornado itself, and I don't know, there's, it's just beautiful. Uh, and I'll sh focus on this for the rest of the talk. You see a primary vortex in the center surrounded by several uh, suction vortices, I guess we'd call them, uh, surrounding the tornado, and it really undergoes some very interesting morphologies. So I'll show this same, uh, same basic uh, sequence. There is the, the vortex that becomes a tornado. You see some mergers. You see this SVC-ish type stuff going on over here. Um, and yes, I have looked at the pressure field, and when you look at this 10-meter simulation and you sort of fuzz your eyes out a bit, it does look quite a bit like our, our coarser simulations down to 30 meters, which is a good thing because the analysis of, of simulations uh, of this magnitude is quite a challenge. I've got uh, you know, a couple hundred terabytes of data, and that's compressed. I've compressed it lossily. Um, so you can see the, and again, I'm going to slow it down, but I wanted to, here's a different, uh, a higher contour. Let me freeze it right there. So you know, if you were just looking at this, contour, which is like about two maybe inverse seconds, you might think, oh, that's what all that's going on here, right? There's that tornado, there, there's the vortex. But you know, again, I'm, I'm, I do a, these visualizations because I can, but because also you can try different thresholds and play with opacity curves for volume rendering to look at different aspects, peel away the complexity. All right, so this is towards the end of the, uh, the late maintenance phase. I'm showing two different views. Now this is at a more reasonable speed. But here's, you know, here's your, your main, I guess you call it the main vortex, but watch what happens. You start to see these suction vortices almost just grow right out of the ground. And it's just tremendous. I've never seen anything like this before. I'm sure the chamber models have, but you get these, these vortices that sort of peel back and rotate around the main vortex. This main vortex in the center kind of wobbles around and it sometimes you know, hangs out with the other guys and wobbles around again. Uh, it's really quite fascinating. And I don't, I don't know if, we've able, if we can sample uh, sample real storms at a high enough uh, frequency to capture stuff like this. And granted, this is just vorticity. I'm not looking at pressure. I'm not looking at velocity. So these, I haven't made sure that these are all just little couplets that you'd see. Uh, chances are that most of them are. But it really is a, a beautiful, uh, a really beautiful uh, animation here. And this is the best view I've got so far of this sort of feature where you see these vortices sort of grow out of the ground. This is like, you know, a half an hour into the tornado. It's rain wrapped at this point. I'm, I'm taking away all that stuff so we can see the internal workings. You can just count these guys. There's like six, seven, eight of them sometimes. Once in a while, an anticyclonic vortex gets in there and sort of gets tossed around because they don't really work well within the, the cyclonic vortices. And you can see, again, you might think of these as, as a scouring paths that Fujita saw when he was looking at damage paths for multiple vortex tornadoes. It really does look very similar to that. So I could show this stuff all day. Again, I. Oh yeah, here's, here's just to show you that this, this, these other vortices extend pretty high up, I would say a couple of kilometers up into, the, up into the tornado. This is concurrent with this to show a different view, but it's not just happening at the ground level. Uh, so anyway, I will, uh, this is the, my last little bit here and I'll just kind of close with some, some th final thoughts. Come on, dude, come on, you're already almost done. Like I said, I could show this stuff all day. Um, so basically, um, 
one point I want to make here is, you know, I like to push the frontiers. I love supercomputers. I love doing this stuff at, at high scale. But you don't need to run at 10 meters to get good results. Our 30 meter simulation and even down to 100 meters shows a lot of the same salient characteristics in the supercell. So that's a good thing. Um, the, 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 as you get to higher resolution, the, the Genesis region moves a little bit into the cold pool. That may have to do with interaction with the ground in our zero strain surface boundary condition. Um, the ingestion of streamwise vorticity, this is the same story I've been saying for a while, um, into the low-level mesocyclone results in an enhanced pressure drop that results in increased convergence and an updraft near the ground. And those things are good for tornadoes, as we, as we know. Um, some other takeaways, um, the parade of vortices sort of stops and vorticity accumulates. There's probably a story there. The, the SVC doesn't look similar. I could probably pick an opacity or, or an isosurface that showed it, make it look at the 30 meters, but it's much more turbulent. Um, I want to say two things. This work would not have been possible without using lossy floating point compression. I'm using something called ZFP. Um, my grad student, Kelton Halbert, has a, a poster on that, 959. I'd also encourage you to check out a poster by Larry Frank at UCSD. He has a, a, a process called entropy field decomposition that we're trying to apply to this and radar data because we want to have sort of a unified framework to examine both real storms and simulated storms. And when you have this much data, you could use all the help you can get. Um, so anyway, I will uh, show my acknowledgments here. This work is po made possible by a lot of other people. Uh, there's a paper you can check out, and if you can actually download this talk right now, orf.media AMS 2020, and I've slowed down those sequences, okay, so you can actually watch that whole tornado go. Uh, feel free, have at it, have fun, and I'd be happy to ask, answer any of your questions. Thank you. I'll be around till Friday, sure.